everybody. I'm Lily Gaylor, and this is Art Watch Radio on WCHE 1520 every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30. So happy you could join us. Today, today I'm thrilled to have artist Timothy Bear. Bear. I didn't even write. Uh, that's perfect. I didn't even do your name right, and it's only um, four letters. Anyway, t- Tim Barr and director of Summer Mill Manning Gallery in Greenville, Delaware, Rebecca Moore. Summer Mill Manning Gallery specializes in 20th and 21st century art with a beautiful location at the historic Brex Mill. Their current exhibition is a one-man show of painter Timothy Barr, who is well-known for his light-filled luminescent landscapes and treescapes. The show starts this Friday, September 14th, and goes through October 13th. Welcome, Rebecca and Tim. So nice to have you here today. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, Okay, so Tim, could we start with you? Um, Can you talk a little bit about your work for this current show at Somerville Manning? Um, When did you start to show there? That sort of thing. I started working, um, well, I started showing there in 2006. Okay. And um, this will be my seventh show, I believe. Oh, goodness. Every two years. Uh, you must I be get... pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's working so far. <laughs> but uh, I started work on this show two years ago. Oh, so goodness. I had two years to work on it. Oh, wow. That's great. How many paintings can we um, hope um, to see? 24. Oh, my gosh. Ranging in different sizes and subject matters and all across the board. Can you talk about some of the subject matter that you cover in your paintings? Um, Well, I try to keep it um, varied. I I like, you know, like about five of each uh, genre. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you have your Chester County, uh, your still lives, um, snow scenes. And then I uh, went a little crazy and I did uh, Yosemite. Uh, a Oof. night scene of Half Dome. Oh, awesome. Um, I did the Tetons. Oh, I love which, that. Uh, in snow. Oh. Uh, and oh, I'm going. Yeah. And then I'd I love did to some, see those. Uh, I, I can't imagine some, you doing those. Uh, surrealists. Cool. I tried surrealism for the first time huh. for a show. What drew you to that this time? Uh, That's really different, it's, isn't it's it? It's something I always wanted to do. I always admired uh, the surrealists, and I, I always had these ideas in my head for a long time, and I thought I'd get them out, mm-hmm. you know, just try it, and I, I did all right. I, I, it's my first try. I think they're really successful. <laughs> I, think, you, Rebecca. I think it's a really good um, transition into something new for Tim, but it's mm-hmm. still really um, stereotypical of his work in the way that the light is really spectacular, mm-hmm. the detail is there, and the composition is still really interesting, mm-hmm. and it's still realism. So I think sometimes people um, get a little nervous when artists move towards a different mm-hmm. subject matter, but I think it's, it's a really smooth transition for Tim this time around. Also, with 24 pieces, you can experiment and have not lose the sense of what you're most known for as well. Yes. Are you going to have one of your fabulous trees? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. good. <laughs> There's two in the show, two. actually. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. they're just amazing. I mean, uh, you hear that all the time. But and, uh, the other thing is, in descriptors, when people talk about your work, uh, people write about your work, they talk about you as a luminescent realist. Is that just an art-speak weird term that somebody came up with? Yeah. Is there something... <laughs> I, they, I mean, um, nobody likes being in a box. They started but. that back in the 90s. Uh, the Luminous were yeah. like, I don't know, back in the 1880s. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know, when when we started painting kind of like where they stopped off, we, mm-hmm. we, we kept it up. Uh, they just put us right there. You know, that's how they... they uh, named us. Well, but, I guess because light is, light is pretty much of an important feature in all of your paintings. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. But there's a glow to them, too, that's pretty cool. And that's from the luminous um, uh, technique. It's, it's layers. You, you're not putting down one color. You're putting down layers of colors, different so, colors, and it glows after you know three layers. It starts to give a, a shimmer. Almost like thin glazes? Yep. yep. Okay. The, Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're actually looking through the colors. I would almost consider the light itself as an additional subject matter in Tim's work. Whereas you have a magnificent stone wall or a, a spectacular uh, sycamore tree, but the light itself really is a, a subject in its own with that composition, I think. Oh, I love thinking about it like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because it is. It's not just sometimes. Sometimes, you know, obviously light is just highlighting an object that mm-hmm. you're trying to play with. Mm-hmm. But when the light is so 
pervasive all over. I can, boy, yeah. must be really cool to own a painting of yours. <laughs> oh, no, just imagine the whole room would light up. Or I'm thinking of a specific painting in this show, Tim. I think it's Deer Run Farm. It's the one with the, yeah. the really uh, prominent roof. And in my opinion, that painting is a, a study of light. So uh-huh. it's just this close-up of a farm roof and some more buildings in the back. But the way that the light and shadow shoot across, I guess it's a tiled roof. Yeah. Um, um, it's 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 very spectacular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's the Diener form painting. That's mm-hmm. that's a red tile, red clay tile. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So when you um, do you do you, do you care if I ask you questions about your your method of uh, coming up with your subject matter, how you're painting it, that sort of thing, or is that a bore? Yeah, it's a bore. Okay. Because <laughs> I was just kind of wondering, if you're looking at something like that, the tiled roof and the, the light behind, we all see that a zillion times, but there was something in there when you saw that, you went, that is what I want to paint. Mm-hmm. And I, I mean, I, I think that's cool. I think that's different. Mm-hmm. I think those are the things that charge us up as artists. I have a hundred ideas ready to go at any time, and it's just when I'm ready to actually put it to paint that I do it. I, they're in my head all the time. And, you know, I, I actually file things on the computer. Oh, good, and yeah. So, I don't know. It's just whatever I feel ready to do mm-hmm. at and, that time. And it, how do you know, like, if it's going to be some huge size? Yeah, right. Because, I mean, I'd that's like a to huge do everything. <laughs> <laughs> Wall space is a consideration mm-hmm. if you're trying to make a living at this. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, everything would work big as yeah. far as I'm concerned. I agree. I mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> love big. And I'm sure it would be easier on your eyes, wouldn't it? Sometimes I think Tim actually paints with a single hairbrush. Do you sometimes? The detail, specifically in his really thin branches and his trees, I would go blind. <laughs> it, it, it's a struggle, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, there's a lot mm-hmm. of eye strain involved. But also, isn't there a lot of time constraint, too? In oh, absolutely, your and, and energy. Like, if you're going to do a 10-hour day just hunched over mm-hmm. with your little brush with a magnifier, it's just... It, it's tiring. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you want to do that for like, what? I don't know. Two weeks. Or your life. <laughs> two weeks. Right? <laughs> you know, you're talking, I'm talking one painting. Two yeah. weeks mm-hmm. uh, or a month. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you know, so you you almost have to get psyched up to do a painting. Because yeah, I think absolutely. one of the big sycamores that we had in the last show, I think you said it took you four months to do one of those paintings. Uh, yeah. Well, two, two paintings mm. um, took to four months. Yeah. And that's all I did for four months. So the pre- precision that has to be so involved do you in get, that. But do you concentrate on one painting in your studio at a time, or do you go back and forth? Because I don't think I could manage concentrating on any one thing in my entire life. Right, yeah. I, I, <laughs> I'll start seven yeah, paintings at one sense. time, and then I'll just grab whatever I feel like doing yeah. that day. Yeah. And if it's going well, then that's what I'm doing the next day. Mm-hmm. So, have well, you ever scrapped a painting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. not many, but That's yes, tough though, isn't it? it's very tough. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. like. And then you'll come back to it, and it's just it's not mm-hmm. going to work. So that's when you know it's a dead painting. It's yeah. not often, but I've done it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> In my studio, I started um, when trying to clean up, and I actually throwing ones out that weren't successful. It felt really great. I can't <laughs> believe I put uh, it off for yeah. so long. You're out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> out of my life. <laughs> do, you, do you get super tidy and crazy about your studio, or do you? I mean, again, I have to. I yeah. have a small area, so mm-hmm. yeah. If, I can't have them like sitting on top of each other; they'll stick to each other. So I, I'm pretty, pretty careful, and I got to watch the cats. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about the cats. <laughs> yeah. How many cats do you have? Three. Uh huh. So and, there's a lot of, and they're hair in your studio. Involved. They come in and out. Yeah, they hang out. So if we see a casual hair on a painting, on the pain, the brush, it's yeah. not going to be a brush, hair, it's yeah. going to be the it's cat. It's a cat hair. <laughs> Do a DNA test. Oh <laughs> exactly. Well, that sounds interesting. Um, what happened with the surrealism? When did you decide that you wanted to throw in some of those elements into this particular show? Well, you know, they're, they're ideas I've had since I'm a kid mm-hmm. and um, just wanted to get them done because, you know, I'm 61. I don't mm-hmm. want to wait much longer before I get these things out there and... Mm-hmm. Uh, I liked what what came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was fun. It was it was different. Well, More of a story. I yes, think narrative. There is a narrative aspect to yeah. to, to each of them, or is it collectively? Um, probably to each of them. I mean, I think throughout his paintings in this show. There's the narrative of Chester County, but okay. I think there's a handful of specific paintings that have more of a storyline than others. 
Uh, with the surrealism work, did you have to ask Vicky and Rebecca first, or did you just go for it? Because that's interesting to me about some of Manning Gallery. I mean, some galleries go, we want exactly what you show us all the time. And I don't think that they're like that necessarily. What do you think? How was it? Um, they were open to it. Cool. Um, and if it didn't work, it, I was only going to do four or five, so uh, you know I had enough time to get the other works in if it, if they didn't work. Mm-hmm. But that would have been my decision, you know, mm-hmm. if they didn't work or not. I mm-hmm. th- I liked them, mm-hmm. and the one I, I worked on it three times until I I thought it was done. I I thought it was done three times, and it wasn't. <laughs> it just kept growing and growing. So. Mm-hmm. And then how did you know it was done? Which is one of those artist questions they get all the yeah, time. Never, Sorry, I'm throwing it at you. Done, but it's, 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 it's good, <laughs> but they're never done. How is, how are the size of those paintings compared to your other larger um, landscapes? Are they small, medium, like a dream? Medium okay, size, medium size. Yeah. Okay, I didn't yeah. do many big paintings for this. Mm-hmm. Um, the two largest ones are the sycamore paintings, mm-hmm. though, so you get the scale yeah. of them, which is really important. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you paint normally, do you paint for a commission? Do you paint for a show? Do you paint for yourself? I do rare rare commissions. Mostly it's on spec for the shows. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Some artists really need to have shows in order to just get in there and work so hard for so long. Yeah. And some people just want to do commissions. It gives you a deadline more a to yeah. think of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. the deadline more helps. <laughs> it really does. And then, Rebecca, you and Vicki, you plan the shows well in advance. So yes. So he did have two years to prepare because you already had your schedule on? Yes. So How with, does that work? With Tim, there, so we do about five shows every year, sometimes more, usually more. Um, but for Tim, we do a show with him every two years. It's just the way it's worked out. Okay. We do that with some of our artists um, where we supplement others and sometimes. And so Tim, every two years will give us a completely new body of work. However, in between, he'll still bring us some new paintings every once in a while. So there's always some new paint. Yeah, there's always Tim in the gallery. So that was something I wanted to ask you about. So let's say for our listeners who are like, well, for whatever reason, they can't go to his Mm -hmm. show, Mm -hmm. but they really want to see some of his work. Mm -hmm. You'll Mm -hmm. always have something of his so that they could buy. He's represented by you. It's not only a gallery. I should say only a gallery because it's a really (laughs) cool gallery. But (laughs) well, there are some galleries who do exhibitions and then once the show is done the work leaves exactly we are not like that we Mm -hmm. have an open storage system which allows anyone to come in to peruse our racks and see all of our contemporary work and some of our 19th and 20th century Mm -hmm. you can go in the back and see the Wyeth paintings hanging next to Tim Barr paintings and Mm -hmm. so even if it's during an exhibition or not we always have paintings by our represented artists and um, when I gave a descriptor which is really just a ridiculous descriptor I said something about you know 20th and 21st century art with a beautiful location. Um, that's really not a specialty. Can you say what you specialize in? <laughs> I mean, that's sort of 200 years of art or whatever. <laughs> okay, one minute. I've got one minute to go, but actually, why don't we get bet right back to it before the break? Um, because I usually end up cutting somebody off. Um, so anyways, I got the signal, so hang in there, everyone who's listening, and we'll be back with the wonderful painter, Timothy Barr, and Rebecca Moore, director of the Somerville Manning Gallery in Delaware. Thanks. to Art Watch Radio, WCHE AM Radio 1520. And uh, this is Lily Gaylor. My guest today are painter Timothy Barr and director of the Summer Mill Manning Gallery in Delaware, Rebecca Moore. Timothy Barr has a one-man exhibition at the Summer Mill Manning Gallery starting this Friday, September 14th, and ending October 13th. The opening reception is this Friday from 5.30 to 7.30 at the gallery, which is located at Rex Mill, 101 Stone Block Row in Greenville, Delaware. So, Rebecca, let's go back to you. We were talking about uh, the gallery and what you do, and actually then we started talking on the commercial break, and um, (laughs) I want to say, that almost every artist that I know would love to show their work someday at some real manning. It is like the pinnacle of success around here. And what is it like 
being director there, and can you give any advice to artists who are listening on the best way to get gallery representation, not necessarily your own? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> That's an interesting question. So what it's, I mean, it's fun. It's very fun. I mean, to be completely surrounded by amazing, beautiful artwork, mm -hmm. 1920th century, um, 21st contemporary, it's so inspirational. And to be in an over 200-year-old textile mill right on the Brandywine River, it's a beautiful place to come and hang out. Um, in terms of any advice I can give artists, I mean, I think that painting for yourself is a really good way to keep going. I think um, as soon as you start painting to cater to other people's wants and needs, I think you will start to lose a little bit of what everybody loves about your work so much. And looking for gallery representation, I think that you artists have to do their own research. So there is a lot of artists out there. There's a lot of galleries out there. And just because one gallery um, does not offer to take your paintings does not mean you're not an amazing artist. So I think everybody has their own market and their own um, way of having their paintings shown. And there is another gallery out there for you. Um, and just don't give up. Just keep trying. And I think that ask around. It's always really great cold calling galleries are not necessarily the oh, best you thing to that? do. Oh my gosh. So ballsy. it's really great to have um, <laughs> like an introduction through a friend or something sure. like that to break the ice. As in is any business interaction. Of right? course. So, yes. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So are you actually cold called? I never even would have thought that. Oh my gosh. That's yes. great. <laughs> Hi, I'd like to show it some real Manning Gallery. Do you have any openings? <laughs> Sorry, no, that's not, it's, I'm sure it's great. And that's, that's an awesome way to do it. Um, one time I asked Vicki, uh, she, when she was a guest here on the show, Vicki Manning, um, who uh, is the owner of some real Manning, um, she said that when I was asking about rejection mm -hmm. and how you have to deal with that with artists coming mm -hmm. and all that sort of stuff, because you're all very nice people. It's just, but it's hard to do, but it's hard it to is. do. It's, it's, it's hard. Yeah. And so she said, well, I did they shouldn't think of it as rejection. And she was just completely straight about it. She said, it's not rejection. It's not a good fit. Exactly. And if it's all about a fit, then really that, that honestly, that strange little bit of tweaking in my brain, if I go to, if I put my art out into wanting to be in a show or into mm -hmm. some special exhibition or what have mm -hmm. you, and they say no, I think of it as not a good fit. And it's it actually exactly. really is helpful. Well, and that's what I think is really important and that artists shouldn't, anytime they do get what they would consider rejection, it doesn't mean that they're a yeah. lesser artist in any way. Mm -hmm. It's just not a good fit. And that's right. it's, there's going to be someone else or another show or another opportunity out there that is going to be a good fit. And I don't know, this is my own personal belief. I'm a believer and you know, everything happens for a reason and this just wasn't your time. Exactly. And there will be a bigger, better time for you in the future. And also, I love the idea that you were stressing not so much, which which I have to say some other galleries might not say, um, stick to what you love. Stick to what yes. you... I mean, what is the passion that is making you do those crazy hours, Tim, that you're putting in? I mean, you want to be true to your, your mm -hmm. own work, mm -hmm. um, not because, you know, they... I really like the trees, so can you do a hundred of those? You know, it's just that takes mm -hmm. away some of your passion mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm, fun that you're mm -hmm. they're, they're a lot of easier jobs well because Tim mentioned that he doesn't you know he does a couple commissions here and there but really not a lot and I think that that is really why his work is so spectacular is because mm -hmm. he paints what he wants to paint mm -hmm. um, and it comes across that way I think sometimes as soon as you tell an artist what to paint their tr their whole heart is not in it those are the ones I quit on. Uh -huh. see I have a terrible mm -hmm. time I've stressed the entire summer over one commission mm -hmm. and no just because you can, you it's just ridiculous it's a game it's a mind it. game it's stupid mm -hmm. I'm sorry it's really lovely commission <laughs> super happy for it sure it's wonderful <laughs> <laughs> no but I mean it's I interesting no but some people really really want, they prefer to have a commission because then they have that person's desires in their mind mm -hmm. and they would like to paint for that person. Wow. And I know, I'm, I'm not like that at all. <laughs> I don't want to think about them at all. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Well, so so when when did you start, so you said, so you gave up your age, I wasn't going to say anything, but so uh, you're you're just um, just tad over 60. When did you decide to commit to being a full-time artist? Uh, let's see, 1990. Well, committed in 87 okay. so I would have been 30 and I was an engineer I was an engineer <laughs> <laughs> I was an engineer out of art school and I was terrible wow. at it and just struggling and lots of overtime and not getting anywhere and um, then I started 
working 40 hours so I could get 40 hours of painting in beside my engineering job. And after three years, it got down to 20, that I could only paint 20. Mm -hmm. And I knew I had to quit my engineering job and do art full time. Uh, So I was used to working like 60 hours a week at that time. So when I quit, I could paint 60 to 80 hours, no problem. Like I had all that, that experience. So it was kind of easy for me to get 40 paintings done the first year at that level of detail. So this is in your 30s? Yeah, I was 33. Oh, my goodness. So it, I had a good start. Yeah, a really good start. For, for being laid in to the mm-hmm. game, I had a good start. Mm-hmm. And then you were showing predominantly here in the Pennsylvania, Delaware area? Or? Yeah, I showed it in New Hope, and then I went to oh, Philadelphia, uh-huh. downtown. Yep. New, and then I went... Uh, I was there for till 2003, maybe, 2004, okay. and uh, uh, just ended up at Somerville. Mm-hmm. So then you had to, st- did you have to learn, I'm, I'm, I'm also speaking for other artists who listen to this show, so did you have to learn how to represent yourself to kind of, you know, it, that's a tough thing sometimes when you, we're putting all this energy and time into a beautiful painting or a beautiful set of paintings, then, you know, putting them under your arm and taking them to a gallery and say, that's a tough thing. Yeah. Do you have? Do yeah. you do it yourself, or do you have somebody else do it for you? Or what's the? Yeah, I, I, to get into Philadelphia, he, he took me. He took like four paintings or five or whatever, and told me I was going to be in the front window. It took like two months, maybe four months of calling every day or every other day, and I was never in the window. And when he finally put me in, they all sold. Yeah, it was frustrating. I was ready to pull out. Like I didn't know the business. Like, but it's really good for other artists to hear that you. Be bit, oh, that's right. Patience. That's so a good patience. word, Tim. Let patience. them do their job. Yeah. You know, and he didn't and that's know I was. True. That's he didn't know I was for an good artist until saying put, that. That is really cool. They don't know you're good until people buy it and tell them you're good. Yeah. Tell the the gallery you're good. Mm-hmm. Then they believe you. Because yep. they're not buying it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and again, selling. it's working with the fit. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you were patient enough, except for the, like, the calls every day. But besides that, you were super <laughs> oh, patient. <laughs> wow, man. I, I was livid. <laughs> but pretty Because cool. I was ready to make a living. I was ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're, they're not. No, that's that's They're a not tough in a hurry. one. Oh my gosh! So then you also um, actually sorry, I'm just veering away from a little bit. You also said that in this particular show you had some scenes that were not Chester County. You did Grand Tetons, one of my favorite places in the world, mm. and Yosemite. That's quite a challenge. Oh, I love Yosemite. Yeah, the Yosemite painting, painting is spectacular. Really? That's yeah. that's you're against a lot of it's one weird of my stats favorite. and one of my favorite Atlantis trips. And all that. It's oh, all right fabulous. before a firefall, isn't it? Uh, or it's a nod to the firefall. It is that a nod to, to the firefall, actually. Okay. Yeah. And there was a fire in that scene that I painted. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot, uh, you know, a big forest fire. Oh goodness! A lot of that scene burned. Oh and, my goodness! Know, it probably happens a lot. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, it's been happening more. But that than firefall not. is wild. I don't know if you know about that. So how did you? So uh, how did you determine? This was the right image. This is the right place. I mean, you know, you walk around and everything is, oh, gosh. you know. Well, we were supposed to camp up in the mm-hmm. top there. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know much about the place. It was Sorry. 4th of July. Huh. And, but there was seven-foot drifts up there when we finally yeah. did get up there. Yeah. But we ended up in the valley for the night. And uh, we... We weren't supposed to. We didn't have a reservation. Yeah, I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah, no. Did you? Oh, I, I thought I was going to die. It was so cold. We were all in our car because we were too cheap to get the tent. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> yeah, it's not illegal. It's not legal. The reason is it's not legal because you could die. Yes. It was so cold. It's just unbelievable. Well, so for, how did you do, you did that? No, we, we tent <laughs> on the valley floor, but we didn't have reservations. So they oh, had you a, mean you camped on the ground? Yeah, right, in the car. In, right outside their campground. Yeah, they yeah, said, yeah. We, there's no reservations, so you can't They're camp. Like well, we did stuff. anyway. Yeah. And at 11 o'clock, they moved our tent into the campground because we were like, against their insurance policies, I guess. <laughs> oh, they didn't goodness. move us out of the, the whole thing. They, they let us there. The next morning, we wake up next to this tent, and it's somebody on their honeymoon. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. They were glad to see us. Uh, I bet they were. <laughs> Super. Um, how did so? Did you actually paint out there, or were you just taking pictures? Taking or? pictures. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I can't imagine bringing all your oils and stuff out. Did yeah, you bring I, I'm not paints? a plain air no, painter uh-uh. at all. Yeah. I, I was in college, and I didn't like it. Mm-hmm. 
I like my uh, studio. Mm-hmm. I like to control. Yeah. So you could control your images by picking what you wanted to paint, uh, which would have been a hard choice, really, with all the scenery that you saw. And then saying, I combined a couple scenes. Okay, cool. Actually, oh, to get cool. what I liked. Oh, neat. I do that with every painting, just about. Yeah, There's Andrew very was, few yeah. that are. You can go there and see that it's actually like that. Oh, that's the cool. The one I'm thinking of is the backlit Brenton Mill painting that's in the show, right? So <laughs> yeah. the Br- Brenton Mill mm-hmm. um, is juxtaposed with the big sycamore at Brandywine Battlefield. Oh, and nice. And so they're kind of in one painting together. And, and yeah. if you didn't know, it, it looks completely natural. Um, but he took the best of both scenes and combined them into um, an amazing painting. Wonderful. That's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'll, I'll do like 100 variations and uh, pick the best one. And some of them are just hideous. Just <laughs> not <nuts. laughs> But, you know, they'll, hopefully there'll be one in 100 that's good. And then, you know, it'll sit for another year till mm-hmm. that one sat for four years. Mm-hmm. I had it on the panel, just didn't feel ready to paint backlighting. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. You know, you really got to, that's one where the layers make sense because you got to do all the lights first and then you throw the darks on top. So now the lights are halos around the darks. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't know, know if I could do it first. I have so many books on glazing and how to get light into your paintings. And I think I just hope that by osmosis, it just kind of enters me. But it's incredibly difficult <laughs> and time consuming. And, you know, those those layers of glazing, that's a that's an amazing talent, but also there's a precision to it, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah. yeah mm-hmm. None of those things I have. I'm, but <laughs> I, I don't like the wet I'm on really wet. I really love it. I, I don't like anything about wet on wet. I'll but, do it in the glazing process sometimes, but I don't even know why I'm doing it. So you have to, to wait a lot of time between all the layers, though, right? Yeah, but... <sighs> But you've already worked that into Sometimes your Sometimes the blend works. You know, you got to work it wet. Like uh-huh. if you're doing clouds and uh-huh. you want them to look soft, you got to do them wet. You uh-huh. can't do them hard yep. you know, or dry. Yep. So, you know, it depends what you're painting. How about with the Grand Teton? What what was the? I, I don't know the painting. So tell mm-hmm. me about tell me about the Grand Teton painting. As far as layers? No, just what does it look like. Oh. What did you pick? I mean, because oh, again, um, you're around beautiful. Everything's mm-hmm. beautiful there. The light in that one, it's that crisp on top. It's did really. did start as a commission. I did the little commission, and then I had all this great photography the guy yeah. took. And I'm like, man, i got to do a painting, yeah. a nice big painting. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, And it's, uh, what do you call it, alpine glow, the light in the morning when it's freezing. It's a warm is light. Like I yeah. can't Pink. wait to see this yeah. with blues. So well, it's like, and really I do cool. have to say that you know Tim's shows are always really spectacular, but we have gotten amazing feedback this time where people feel that he really is getting to a completely different level. Um, so I think this would be a good one for you to come out and see because it's. I can't wait. You know. I'm really excited. I'm really. I'm excited about the fact that the show is now ending. That went by really quickly. It was such a joy to have you both in the studio. You're amazing, and I can't wait to actually see your work. <laughs> um, anyway, so uh, remember, um, listeners, uh, Timothy Barr's art show at Summer Mill Manning in Greenville, Delaware, starts this Friday, September 14th, and ends October 13th. Very exciting. Also remember to catch the final month of the extraordinary Natural Wonders, the Sublime and Contemporary Art at the Brandywine River Museum of Art. Art. And tomorrow night is an awesome art chat with the guest creator of that show, uh, Su- Suzanne Ramiak. Uh, you can get tickets for it, and I will be there, too. Uh, thanks again to my guests, Rebecca Moore and Timothy Barr. This is Lily Gaylor with Art Watch Radio, WCHE 1520, every Wednesday from 1 to 1.30. Next week's art radio show is hosted by clay artist Rhoda Keller, who will be talking to two museum development officers, my old line of work, um, Betty Marmon and Kelsey Rhodes, both from the Philadelphia Museum of Art. For past audios of Art Watch Radio, go to my website, lilygaylor.com or Chadsford Live. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>